There are two things in life that most people struggle to comprehend and understand, and usually try to avoid in their life due to the frustrations. The first is calculus. The second is the CDC Assisted Reproductive Technology Summary Data about the fertility rates of each clinic. Today, we talk about how to read the CDC data to determine if a clinic is the right clinic for you and how to compare clinics. I'm Dr. Mark Amos, and this is Taco About Fertility Tuesday. I think one of the first things I want to start with is that when it comes to these numbers and statistics, they don't always tell the whole story. So when I talk about things and what you should infer from them, keep in mind there are always situations where it may not be as direct. And so these scenarios I'm talking about may not pertain to that clinic. So please use this information to help you make decisions, but understand there are other factors that people use to decide on which clinics they want. And when you read this data, look at it for guidance, but don't look at it as the way to make all your decisions. So let's first start with determining what is the CDC Assisted Reproductive Technology Data. Essentially, Congress wanted people to be able to know when clinics are saying that they have certain pregnancy rates, whether they were true or not. And they also wanted to look at data to make sure that the babies being born are healthy and whether there are any things they needed to look at to find out there are issues with IVF. And so they passed an act that requires all clinics to send data to the CDC about pregnancy rates and complications. Now, you may have heard one called SART, S-A-R-T. SART is not required by law. Only the CDC is required by law. SART is basically a boys club where clinics go and pay to be part of this club and they present the data. And that data is then also sent to the CDC because legally they have to. What's interesting is SART was always there to make the data easier to read for patients, although some may say it's a little more difficult to read than the CDC data. Today, I'm going to go line by line on the CDC data and explain what each one means. I am not going to cover SART. I may do that in a future episode, but currently I'm going to focus on the CDC data since every clinic must send their data to the CDC. So it always gives you a chance to compare when looking at clinics. Now, I want to preface when we're talking about comparing clinics. I would never recommend someone see one clinic because they had an 80% pregnancy rate and the other one had a 78. To me, that's not statistically significant to worry about. What we're going to be talking about is looking at the numbers and trying to figure out what they mean. Is that 80% they have a good number or is it artificially elevated because they did things different at their clinic? That's what we're going to be talking about today. Now, to get to the CDC art data, you can just go to cdc.gov and put in ART, and usually that will pull up something where it says ART success rates. Then you'll want to click on that. Now, for this example, I'm going to use our data set since I don't want to make any clinic feel like I'm, I'm pointing towards them. I will use another clinic that's in town just to show comparison, but I won't name that clinic out of respect for the other clinic. When you get to the page, on the very far left, there'll be some tabs. The first tab says clinic services and profiles. The purpose of this page is to tell you a little bit of information about the clinic, what type of services they provide, and tells you a little bit about the summary of how many cycles they're doing. It also will tell you who the medical director is in that clinic. So if you want to know if they use donor services, such as donor eggs, you would look on this to find out. The second tab is called patient and cycle characteristics. Now, this tab is going to tell you a little bit about the information about the patients going through IVF. So, for example, if you want to find out, were they seeing younger patients? Were they doing PGT testing? Was that clinic 
doing more fertility preservation. This tab is going to give you that information about the patients that that clinic is seeing. Now, the next tab is probably the next important tab, which is called success rates, patients using own eggs. And what's neat about this tab is you can really find out a little bit about the clinic and their chances of getting pregnant at their clinic. The first selector on the right says select a success factor. And what you're doing there is you're picking a factor that you want to look at, such as what their live birth rate is per retrieval or what their live birth rate is per transfer. You may also care about what the singleton rate is or do they have multiple birth deliveries. So this is where you can look at this. But what's also nice is to the left of it, it has what's called patient type. And so there's the patients who use their own eggs and donors. And then on the far left is what's called the diagnosis. So you can find out, do they do well with male factor infertility? Do they do well with endometriosis or tubal factors? And so you can look at the data for you to compare yourself. Now, I always remind people when you're looking at data, you're really looking at the under 35 age group to get a general idea of the quality of the clinic. It doesn't mean you can't look at the other age groups, but there's so many other factors when it comes to diminished ovarian reserve that it's hard to compare them directly. So usually I say start with the under 35 to know what the rate is and then compare yourself by looking at the other groups. The meat of this conversation is going to be on the last tab. And that's the tab that says clinic data summary. And this is really the fast way to look at a clinic and find out if this is the right clinic for you. So we're going to go down each portion. The first portion says the number of attended retrievals. What this means is these are the patients who intended to do a retrieval at the clinic. Doesn't mean the ones who have finished the retrieval, just as the one were intended. Matter of fact, if you go four lines down, you'll see it says number of retrievals. That number should be smaller because those are the people that actually went through it. And if those numbers are close to the number of attended retrievals, then that tells you they don't cancel a lot of cycles because those numbers are very similar. The second line says percentage of intended retrievals resulting in live birth deliveries. Now, what that's talking about is saying, what percentage of people who go through an intended retrieval end up having a live birth? Our clinic for under 35, it's 64.6%. And then for each age group, it has that. So that's telling you, if I go through a retrieval there, what's my chances of coming away with a baby? The next line, which is the third line, says percentage of intended retrievals resulting in singleton live birth deliveries. Now, this number is a number that's saying not just do you get pregnant, but what if it's just one baby? Now, as you can imagine, a clinic that only does single transfers of embryos is going to have a very similar number to their live birth numbers. A clinic that does allow more than one embryo, those numbers will be further apart. The next one goes down to number of retrievals. So this is the number of retrievals that actually went through retrieval. The next line after that says percentage of retrievals resulting in live deliveries. So again, this is not intended. This is saying of the people who went through, actually finished, what was the chances of them having a live birth? So before I told you it was 64.6% for intended retrievals, and then our percentage of retrievals resulting live birth is 64.9%. So it's slightly higher because only one person never made it to retrieval. And so that number goes up because it removes that person. So when you're looking at those numbers, if someone has a very high percentage of retrievals resulting in live birth deliveries, but their percentage of intended retrievals resulting in live birth was lower, then that means that clinic cancels a lot of patients and that they're only letting the really good patients continue on. The next line is percentage of retrievals resulting in singleton live births. So again, similar to the one before, this is going to be slightly higher because now you're removing the retrievals that were not intended and ended up falling out. The next line is pretty self-explanatory, the number of transfers, saying how many transfers does this clinic do? The line after that is percentage of transfers, or transfers resulting in live birth deliveries. So this is truly now not the retrieval, but saying, okay, if you just look at transfers, what percentage of people get pregnant? And not just get pregnant, but have a live birth, a baby in their arms. 
And so again, looking at the age 35, that's going to give you a general idea of the quality of the clinic. Now, you can actually compare this to national average numbers, which are also found on the CDC. The line after that is percentage of transfers resulting in singleton live birth deliveries. So just like before, these are now looking at just single births. So if you're a clinic that only does one embryo transfer, then that number is going to be very similar to the live birth of deliveries. Now, there's also the possibility that the embryo can split, and that's where that number can change. The next number is one of those numbers that really tells you about the clinic, which is the average number of intended retrievals per live birth delivery. This number is really going to let you know, am I going to get pregnant on the first try? Am I going to have to take multiple tries? The higher this number is, means the more cycles you have to go through to come away with a live birth. So for example, in our clinic, compared to the other clinic in town, ours is 1.5 for under 35, theirs is 2.0. That means with a number of 1.5, it takes 150 retrievals to intend to have 100 live births. This means that if we do 150 retrievals, then you'll have 100 live births. Versus at the other clinic, which is 2.0, it takes 200 retrievals to come away with 100 live births. The next part is it says percentage of new patients having live birth deliveries after one intended retrieval. What this is talking about is saying someone who has never had IVF. So if you're someone who has never had IVF, this is the number you want to look at because it's telling you, hey, this is me. I've never had IVF. This is my first time. What's my chances of coming away with a live birth? The second line under that then says percentage of new patients having live birth deliveries after one or two intended retrievals. So now it's saying, okay, we're looking at more than one cycle. And usually these numbers are going to be pretty similar just because the chances are if they're a good clinic, they're going to get pregnant right away. There's not going to be that much of an increase. If there's a big difference between these, then it means that the rate is a little bit lower on the first one and it takes time cumulatively to increase your pregnancy rate. The line below that is pretty self explanatory. It's asking, what is the percentage of new patients having live births after all intended retrievals? And again, if you are a clinic that's doing many, many retrievals on patients, that number will go up. But for most people, especially in the under 35, it's going to be very similar to the one or two because most people under 35 don't need to undergo more than one or two retrievals. The next line is an important line the average number of intended retrievals per new patient. That really tells you the type of clinic they are. Are most people going there doing multiple cycles or are they just doing one cycle? So at our clinic, our number is one, which means for people under 35, most people just do one cycle. At the clinic I'm comparing to, they do 1.2 for people under 35, which means they have to do more cycles to potentially get people pregnant. The next part says average number of transfers per intended retrieval. And this is again another important number. The higher this number means how many actual transfers you might get per retrieval. At ours, it's 1.1. At the clinic I'm comparing it to, it's 1.0. What that means is that at a clinic with 1.0, it means every single person who undergoes a retrieval is pretty much getting a transfer. At our clinic, it's saying not only are they getting a transfer, but they're also potentially getting another transfer. Now, remember, this is statistical. You can have 100 people go through. You can have 100 transfers, but some of those transfers might have been someone who had two embryos, and so they underwent two transfers where someone else didn't have any transfers. In the end, you want this number to be close to one. If it's less than one for people under 35, it basically means that on average, people are not getting a transfer at that clinic after one cycle. And that's a little bit concerning. Those are the main parts I wanted to discuss that will help you make decisions when you're looking at clinics. There's a couple other lines at the very bottom called characteristics of ART cycles. And I think the two important parts of that one are the line that says percentage of intended egg retrieval cycles without any eggs retrieved. What this is saying is either one of two things. Either the clinic has really, really severe 
patients who only make one or two eggs and are not getting eggs, or they're not as good as getting the eggs. And I do believe there is differences between doctors when it comes to retrieving eggs. Some get close to 100% every time, others only get 90%. The next line there that is percentage of cycles discontinued after retrieval and before transfer or banking. This number is going to give you a little bit of idea of the cancellation of that cycle. Now, there are different reasons for cancellation. There could be reasons because people got divorced and they didn't do their transfer. There could be cancellation because it's not going well, and that's a decision you make with your doctor. But this is a good measure of helping you figure out, am I going to get canceled a lot at this clinic? The other way you can look at cancellation rates is looking at the number of attended retrievals versus the number of retrievals. If that number is very wide spaced, that means they're canceling a lot of patients. So when you hear about people saying that clinics may cherry pick the better patients, that's exactly what they're talking about. If those numbers are very close to each other, then they're obviously not cherry picking it because everyone who's intended to go through is actually making it through. So for example, our number is 226 patients had an intended retrieval under 35. 225 of them underwent undergoing retrieval. That shows there's a very low cancellation rate and that we're not cherry picking the best patient to put through and canceling the bad ones. As I stated earlier, this stuff is not easy to understand. I just wanted to give a little bit of an insight for people who look at it so they're not completely confused. In the end, you still have to look at other factors when you're picking a clinic, but this is just one factor to potentially use to help you pick the best clinic for you. As I always joke around and say, if you're 22 years old and healthy with just maybe some mild male factor, you could probably go to Bob's Backyard IVF and get pregnant with no problems. But if you're one of those people who have struggled or have failed or have even only have one chance and want to make it the best, Looking at the CDC data can at least help you, guide you to the best clinics. And like I said, a small difference is not that big of a difference. If someone has 63% and the other one only has 60%, I'm not too worried about that. But if the change is more than 10%, then in that situation, it should matter. In the example I just gave you of 63 and 60, that's only a 5% difference. And I don't think you should be choosing clinics just because of 5%. But if there's 10%, 20%, then that means it's going to take more cycles to be able to have success. In the end, you need to make the best decision for yourself, but hopefully this is helpful. As always, if you like this podcast, please tell people about us. Give us a five-star review on your favorite medium. And as always, I look forward to talking to you next week on Talk About Fertility Tuesdays.